Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today I'm going to be doing another Alien Sphinx Cat. Our first one was just alien themed in general and then I tried doing a dragon one. This time we're going to be doing an angler fish uh, cat sphinx. So it's kind of like having a catfish. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so we're going to be working on the clay head first and we'll actually have to do quite a bit to this. Um, but right now I'm starting off with a basic shape of tinfoil and I'm going to get that covered up and figure out the basic shape for the head itself. I can then start marking out where the key features are going to be, like the eyes, nose, and mouth. Just kind of build up my clay, lay out the little glass pieces to mark out where my eyes are going to go. And I need to also make sure to leave room for our third eye. So with my three-eyed cats, I like to put the third eye kind of lower on the muzzle. I just think it looks very interesting and different compared to how a lot of third eyes are added to creatures. So I'm going to do the same thing with this eye, but it's going to be on our little angler, like, dangly thing. So for now, we're just going to have to leave a hole for where we're going to add the wires for our third eye to connect to. So right now what I'm mainly doing is focusing on the detail of the snout and the nose. This is not going to get furred or anything like that, so I want to add a bunch of texture and detail to it. I'm going to texture the rest of the clay face and then we can add our holes for the eye stalk and for the ears. This piece is going to have very large ears just like the other cats that I've done, um, so I'm going to have to have holes for the wireframe to support them. Once I'm happy with how everything looks, I'm then going to put our clay head in the oven for a bake. I'm going to bake it for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Once it's out of the oven and cooled to touch, we can start adding more detail to it. So the next thing that I want to work on is the tentacle kind of eye stalk for the third eye. So for this, I want it to be pretty long and I want it to be poseable. So I'm going to figure out how long I want it and I'm going to cut a wire to the length that I want the eye stalk to be. Now how I'm going to actually thicken this up so that it's not just a thin little wire, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to be wrapping it in yarn really, really tightly and just keep going over it until I get it to the thickness that I want it to be. Now I found that I really enjoy making like eye stalks or tentacles with yarn like this. The hardest part is just making sure that you don't make it lumpy and to go over it very evenly so you get the correct thickness and you don't get a lump or a kink somewhere. You want to go over everything really evenly and keep the same level of tautness when you're wrapping so you don't get any lumps. So I'm going to get everything wrapped, I'm going to get to the thickness that I want, and then we can start adding clay to this. So at the very end I have the wire kind of curled up on itself and we're going to build up clay right there so we can place the eye at the end. Now blending the clay into the yarn was definitely difficult. It didn't want to blend, but I did my best and got it as clean as possible. I'm not too, too worried because I am going to go over everything with a thick layer of glue to kind of blend everything together a little bit more. So I just did my best to lay everything out. I took the eye and I placed it in the very middle of the little lump of clay, and then I started adding uh, strips of clay around it to make the eyelids. Thank you. 
Now, once I'm done sculpting the eye in place at the end of the stock, I'm going to set this off to this side and we're going to start working on the face. So I'm going to pop out those eyes and add the eyes that I want for the piece and then we're going to start framing those like we did with the other eye. We're going to take strips of clay, lay them out, make those eyelids. Um, I'm also going to add a bunch of decorative stuff to the middle of the face and I made ahead of time a bunch of spikes so these are already cured and I'm going to add those to the face as well. Now before I add the eye stock to the piece, I want to make sure I have everything done because I don't want it in the way while I'm sculpting. So I'm going to make sure that I'm completely done with the face and then we can glue and attach the eye stock and then put the clay around it to kind of blend everything in and make it look a little bit more uh, cohesive. I'm going to set this somewhere safe to cure overnight and while I still have my epoxy clay out I'm going to make some cloths for our feet. So for this I'm going to just make some little cones and then I'm going to use a wooden dowel to kind of curve the cones around it to make a curved claw. I'm going to make enough for all four of my feet. I'm going to lay them somewhere where they can cure as well and then the following day we can make our feet. Now to make the feet, I'm going to start off with some simple pieces of wire. I've got them bent over themselves so it's not just one straight piece, that way there's more to hold on to. Um, and I'm going to start covering this in clay. I'm going to keep it very thin and then when we get to the end, once we have everything blended, we're going to add a ball of clay to make the very base of the foot. Once we have that blended in, we're then going to add balls of clay for the toes. Now when adding the toes, I like to make my middle toes just a little bit larger than the outer ones. It just makes the foot lay a lot better than having them all the same size. So I'm going to lay those out, blend them into the foot. Once I have the basic shape laid out, I can take those claws that we made the previous day and I can push them into the tips of each toe. Once I'm done putting together the four feet, I'm then going to bake them in the oven pretty much the same time as we did the head, about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Okay, so we're almost ready to start painting everything. I just need to go back to the head real quick and we need to paint over our eye stock. We just want to use some fabric glue to bind all of that yarn together. So I'm going to go over that a few times with a couple different layers and then we're going to have to let that dry. Once that's completely done drying, we can start priming our clay pieces. Okay, so the colors that I'm going to be working with for the body are going to be a dark blue along with a seafoam green. And then I want the legs and tail to be a pink and we'll probably have some pink on the belly. So for the clay head, what we're going to do is we're going to start primering with our green first and then we'll lay out where we want the blue. After I laid out the blue, I realized I want to darken it just a little bit, so I'm going to add a little bit more darkness to it. Not the entirety of the blue, but just a little bit here and there. Then I'm going to take some pink and I'm going to go over our green section, mainly the cheeks, and add just a little bit of blush to it. Thank you. 
Once I'm happy with how the color looks, I'm going to start working on shadows. So I'm going to start around the nose, starting with the nostril holes and kind of around the cheeks where the markings are, and then we'll start moving closer to the eyes and just darkening around that to give it a bit of shadow. And then once I'm happy with how everything looks, I'm going to let everything dry and then we can scrape away the excess paint that got on our glass eyes. Make sure you don't forget about the third eye on the eye stock. I almost did. <laughs> And then for painting the feet, I'm going to be painting them pink. I'm going to try my best to match the fabric that I have. Pink is one of those colors that's a little tricky for matching, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to get everything primered, and then we're going to add a little bit of detail to these. We're not going to go super intense or anything. Mainly, I just want to paint the paw pads a separate color, so I'm going to pick a different shade of pink. We'll paint those in and then I'll add a highlight to them and then the claws I want to paint like a bluish purple color. Once everything is painted and I've given it time to dry, I'm then going to mix up some resin and put a thin layer over everything. The only thing that is not going to get a layer of resin is going to be the eye stock because that would cause it to not be as poseable and could even crack. So I'm going to paint over everything but that. Now our resin is going to need some time to cure, so while that is curing we're going to work on the sewing. So here's the pattern that I'm going to be using to make my angler catfish. Now it's a lot, but it's very similar to all the other cats, just with alterations here and there. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to work on are going to be the sides of the body. So I want majority of it to be a dark blue, that will be the top section, and then the under section is going to be our seafoam green. So I'm going to have to sew these two pieces together to make our sides. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fabric for the back legs, which is going to be a minky pink, and I'm going to attach it to the other half of the leg that's still connected to the body right now. Next, I'm going to take the fabric for the tail. There's a left and right. I've got them pinned together, and I'm going to sew down the under section of it with my sewing machine to connect both of them. Then we can add this to the body. So basically, I'm going to sew one half of the body to each half of the tail. And then I'm going to take the inside sections of the legs. I don't know why I left these separated. I had it, I could have just had this one solid piece but I'm going to sew these pieces together and then I'm going to sew this to the leg section that is already on the body so just going down the front of it now the fabric that I want to use for the belly has a backing that's a little bit kind of loose it just it, I need something a little firmer so I'm actually going to sew it to another piece of fabric the mink fabric that way I can hand stitch it in place Otherwise, it's so thin that it'll bunch up. So I'm going to sew that fabric onto this, and then we can take the belly piece and we can sew it in between the two side pieces of the body. Now I'm going to work on the front legs. The fabric for the front legs I have broken up into three different colors, the blue, the green, and the pink. So I'm going to sew these together. The inside portions only have the green and pink. Then once those are put together, I can take an inside piece and an outside piece and sew down the front. These are going to be added onto the body later. 
The other pieces that we need to work on are the ears and all of the fins that I'm going to add. So for the ears, the backing is going to be the blue fur fabric, but the inside is going to be a flat suede fabric. So I'm going to pin these together and sew all the way around. Then to kind of flatten the ear, I'm going to go around the edge again and just kind of stitch it a little bit flatter. And then for the fins, I've got a bunch of different fins that we're going to add going down the back of the piece, the sides, and around the face. I went with more of a shiny fabric for this. So I've got the fabric pinned together for each fin. I'm going to sew around the pattern that I have drawn onto the fabric. Once I have that done, we'll flip this right side out and then we'll add some decorative stitching to it. Okay, so we have everything ready. Now we just need to start putting our doll together. So I've got my wire frame already assembled and what we need to do is take the fabric for the body and add it to the wire frame. I have basically the back legs already attached so the wires are just going to run through those for the back legs. But for the front ones I'm going to have to cut tiny little holes for the wires to go through. So I'm going to get that in place and then we can take our clay head and we can add it to the wire for the neck. Once we have our head in place on the wire, we can then start taking the fabric for the neck and gluing it around the base of the head. After that has had some time to dry, I can then start sewing the body closed. So I'm going to start at the back of the head and just work my way all the way down until I get to the end of the tail. Now while I was doing this, I realized I could have been sewing my fins in place, but I kind of forgot about them, so we'll add those later. So I'm going to get the entire body closed up and stuffed, and then when I get to the end of the tail, I'm going to take the fin that we have for the very end of the tail, run it over the remaining bit of wire, and then we're going to attach the fabric. Now since we already have the fabric for the back legs connected to the body, we're going to work on those first. So I'm going to adjust the length of my wires, figure out how long I need them to be, and then we're going to add our clay feet to the very ends of those. I'm going to wrap everything together with a thinner gauge wire, and then we can take the fabric for the legs and glue that at the base of the foot. We want to let that dry a little bit and then we can stuff and close up the legs. Now at this point our piece is very fluffy so I figured let's get control of this hair. So I'm going to get my hair trimmer and we're going to shape the body a little bit more. This will also make attaching the fabric for the front legs a lot easier. There won't be as much fluff in the way. So I'm going to get everything trimmed up and then once we have that to our liking, I can start taking the fabric for the front legs, figuring out the position where I want those, and we can start sewing them on the sides of the body. Once we have that in place, we can work on adding the other clay feet to our wire frame, gluing the fabric around the bases of those, and then stuffing and closing up the front legs. Once we have those in place, we can also go over those with our fur trimmer. Once I'm done with all the shaving, I can start adding my details, starting with those fins that I kind of forgot about. So I'm going to get those started from the back of the head going down the body and then a few on the tail, and then we can move on to finishing up the face. 
So I want to add those ears to the face, so I'm going to add some wires real quick to have the ears rest on so they can be posed. So I'm going to run my ears over those wires and then I'm going to glue the bottom of the ears to the top of the head. So I'm going to get those in place and then we can start adding some other things around the face. Now, of course, I'm going to be furring the face here and there, adding tufts to cover up the base of the ears so you don't see the seams. But I also have some fins that I want to add kind of going around the face. So I'm going to get all of that glued into place and kind of cover up the face with my fur. Um, and then when it came to where I would add smaller fur trimmings, I decided I was going to add a sequent fabric to the face. So I'm going to cut some sequin fabric to fit the sections of the face and then I'm also going to remove little bits of the sequins from the fabric so I can glue them on top and kind of hide the seams of the fabric. Other than that, I want to add a few decorative beads here and there on the body. So I want to add some to the ears, the end of the tail, and then a few larger fake pearls to the sides of the body. Okay guys, and here is our catfish. Another uh, large piece. <laughs> I had so much fun with this. I really am glad that I figured out how to do these little like bendy like tentacle things because they just add so much character to my like more weirder pieces. <laughs> But anyways, I'm going to have our catfish up for sale on my website, so if you're interested in buying him and giving him a new home, check the links down below. There's a bunch of other links to different art supplies and stuff that I like to use to make my art dolls, so if you're interested in trying something out yourself, or you're just curious in general on what I'm using, you can check those out. Now these are affiliated links, so if you do buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!